Hey guys, it's James and in this video I'm going to show you how to upgrade the BL Touch on the Ender 3. I'm going to try to make this installation process as easy as possible. I started off with this with the meter long extension cable. However, I found this meter long extension cable was a little short. You're going to need at least a one and a half meter extension cable. So you want to get a kit. I suggest you get the one that's specifically made for the Ender 3. You want to get a 27 pin board. Otherwise, you're going to have to cut the wires and do the soldering. Now, the kit may come with this USB ISP. However, I find that this is not really the way to go, especially if you have a Windows 10 operating system. You're going to have a hard time finding the drivers for it, and you're going to spend countless hours just trying to get it to work using the, uh, this method. Instead, I suggest you get an Arduino Uno like this one. This is going to make your process much easier and much faster. And if you do use a pin 27 board, the board is going to get in the way of the fan and you're going to have to get like a bridge to put on the plate cover on the top. So just keep that in mind and you're going to need a longer screw. If you don't have some already, I recommend these. They come assorted in different lengths and different uh, sizes. Okay, so let's get started with this video. Use it like a screwdriver and try to wedge in between the connectors and pull out the connector of the BL Touch. Just be careful not to break the tabs on the side. Just work from side to side and try to wiggle it or wedge it out of the BL Touch. Don't put too much pressure on it. If you do, you might actually break the uh, tabs. This is a Smart BL Touch 3.1 version. A meter and a half long extension cable and just replace the connector with the extension cable. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver to mount this to the metal mount. This is pretty much straightforward. Just use the screws and the nuts that come with the BL Touch. After mounting the BL Touch to the metal end piece, you can go ahead and mount it to the head of the printer. three screws on the top cover, two in the front, one in the back. The fan itself is going to still be attached to the board. Use the cutters and screwdriver that come with the printer to get the glue off the connector pins on the Z-stop connector and the LCD connector. Once you remove the plug, you can remove the end stop. I'm switching out these two pins because uh, they were not in the correct position. You can use a sharp object like a screwdriver to uh, depress the tabs and pull out the pins.
check your wires to see if they are actually in the correct position. Uh, I had to take out the wires from the connectors and switch them around. You take off the LCD cable, put your 27 board pin, and um, you can't miss it. The pins fit in place. You also have this wire, these wires coming in from the BL Touch right here. The yellow, blue, red wire is going to go signal, ground, VCC, and then again, it's going to go from it's going to go from yellow, blue, and red. Once you have your bootloader installed, you can actually close up this lid or cover, but don't cover it up until you finish uploading your bootloader. So guys, if you kept up with me this far, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thanks. Also go back to my previous video here. I'll link it also in the description below. Upload the bootloader and then come back to this video and watch the rest of the video. Thanks. Now by the time you come back to this video, you're going to have the bootloader installed, the Arduino ID installed with the correlating libraries installed for the Sanguino board. And once you've done that, you can come back to this video and watch the rest of the video. Now, a couple of things that I want to tell you is that I'm going to be using the Marlin 1.1.9 instead of the 2.0. I've been going through all the different forums and uh, just looking up the various reasons and different conditions. Um, the reason why you want to go with the 1.1.9 instead of the 2.0 is because you have an 8-bit board and your space is going to be limited on the board. So a lot of the features and functions, you're going to have to slash it and get rid of it anyways. And so the 1.1.9 is going to be more stable and better for the Sanguino board. So that's why I'm sticking with the 1.1.9. Also, I'm going to be uploading that into my Thingiverse account. <clears throat> that way there won't be a lot of confusion where where edits or changes have been made and updated to a different website or like GitHub <clears throat> and then have the problem of the firmware not working for a particular person. By uploading the one that I pre-configured, I know it's going to work. Some of the things you are going to have to change if like you say you get like a different mount or you have different hardware upgrades. That's something that you should go and look into because the settings will change for the individual's printer. Like my settings may be different or, or my hardware upgrades may be different. So that is why, you know, my configuration will work for me. And I know it will work for most of the stock printers with the BL Touch upgrade. So basically you can go ahead and download the configuration files that I've uploaded to my Thingiverse account. And then from there you can go wherever you need to to um, change out your configuration for your firmware. So I'm going to put the link on the description below. So go ahead and check that out. And if you go here, just click on this. Where is it? Thing detail. Oh, here it is. The thing files. Go ahead and click on that. Here I have the bridge for the cover. And also I have the uh, zip file for the Marlin 1.1.1. Nine. This is supposed to be a 9, but okay, we're going to go here and download it. If you go to download all files, sometimes it doesn't work. So that's why I'm telling you to go to the thing files and download it individually. And then you're going to extract this file. You're going to go here to the Marlin 1.1.1. Go to Marlin again. And then you're going to click on this Marlin INO. And then you're going to go here to the configuration H. Actually, you don't even have to go to the configuration H. I already have it pre-configured everything. You're just going to take your, um, where is my cord? You're going to just plug in your printer with the USB, micro USB. Just plug it in. And then, and then you're going to go to tools. You're going to make sure you have the Sanguino board right here. And then you're going to go to the Mega 1284, select that, select your COM, and go to the programmer AVRISP MK2. Or if that doesn't work, 
try this one also but go ahead with this one number one and arduino as an isp number two and then you're going to just click on upload like that and then it's going to compile the sketch and then um, when you're done it's going to say done uploading right here on this side so some of the configuration edits that i did to the firmware i'm just going to leave that for the end of the video so guys, I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers. I'd appreciate it if you can hit the subscribe button, share this video and press the like button. Like, so you're gonna have to print up something like this. You're just gonna thread it in like so. Oops. And then And then I'm gonna have to find something for this right here. I, I have to make something that's gonna have clearance for the knob. So I'm gonna have to design that and uh, make something for it. But so far I had this right here. And then I put a little holes on the front and the side so it gets a little bit of air. You are gonna need longer M3 screws. I suggest an assorted pack like this. This is gonna give you an assorted size of screws with the lengths that you need. You're gonna need the M320. Now, if you want your printer to work correctly, you are gonna to have to set up the Z offset. I am gonna put that step in another video, in an upcoming video, because you're gonna to have to get the XYZ offset. You're gonna to have to find those values and I'm gonna to try to put it in a step-by-step -step process. Um, a lot of people, when they get their offset values, they'd like to use this micro caliper, but a lot of people are not going to have this. So I'm going to show you a different way. Uh, I think it's actually a better way. Uh, most people are going to have like a ruler. I've actually done a video on it using my cr 10 Pro. However, the Ender 3 is a little bit different. The method is going to be the same, except that you have a knob you can't really control too well. So it takes a longer time. It's like more tedious, I would say, instead of the touch screens. And I'm gonna show you how to set up the Z offset value. You have to watch that upcoming video. Otherwise, it is not gonna work correctly. Your Z offset is not gonna be aligned to the bed at this state. So please don't write me a comment of, oh, it isn't working correctly. Just make sure you watch the upcoming video and then it will work correctly um, but i want to leave that for a different video because uh, getting the xyz offset value and all that is all related and it, it should really be in a separate uh, video on its own so i want to thank you for watching this video and hopefully i was able to help you out if you have any questions go ahead and leave a comment below and i'll try to answer it to the best of my ability. Uh, I'm just going to show you a couple of things. I'm not going to go into, again, too much detail. You're going to have to do this for yourself. Like the custom boot screen, like um, the splash screens and stuff like that. I had to take those out. It took too much memory, too much space. And then like, make sure you have the baud rate at 115200 again i have all this already pre-configured you're not going to have to do anything but i'm just pointing out some of the things that you should actually take a look at when you have time if you want to configure it with your own uh, this is pretty important depending on the mount that you have you're going to have to set your z offset i mean xyz offset like i have the uh, auto bed leveling by linear uh, restore leveling after E28. Also, I enable the slim menu. If you if you can just go ahead and press Control F and then just look for uh, the terms or uh, the text, and then it'll take you to it. The slim menu has to be enabled. If you don't do this, again, you're not gonna have enough space. <clears throat> And then some things that you might want to try out is maybe, I mean, that's if you want to try it out, you know, you can just put, um, this is like a mathematical equation, you know, like the bed size, you divide it by two, and that's the point that you're going to get. 
um, for the homing type of situation. So again, that's something you might want to try out. You can also define your bed size over here. I have it at 235, but if you have like the clips, you might want to actually maybe switch it out to 225 instead. Just be careful, you know, your BL touch might actually graze some of that, uh, the clip. So again, that's something you might want to consider. You have the BL touch defined with the servo pin 27. I think I wanted to take a look at something else. Anyway, if you watch my previous video, you're going to know that a lot of the things like the, the double slashes are comments and stuff like that. So um, you need to define the SD support, which means that you're not going to be able to print. And you're not going to be able to print with your micro SD card unless you have this uh, defined. Once you use like auto print or something like that, um, you can actually disable this uh, support and then you can use uh, that will free up some space for you to add some other features that you want. You're not going to be using the speaker after uh, you put in the pin 27 board. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you next time. Thanks.